Any institution with a long history is bound to have a complex past full of secrets. And there's no institution with quite as long of a history as the British royal family. The Queen's staff are armed with more secrets than you can shake a stick at, and none more so than her guards. And we might have just found out some tidbits of truth for ourselves. These are the secrets that the Queen's guards don't like to speak about. Number 15. Touching Guards Off Limits It's a fact that touching the Queen's guards is an absolute no-no, but that doesn't stop them from touching anyone else who happens to get in their way. Don't let that funny bushy hat fool you, they're there to do a job, and it's a job they take very seriously. One of Her Majesty's rulings is that her guards are not allowed to be touched or threatened. However, it is also rumored they aren't allowed to speak unless it's necessary. For example, they've been known to shout a warning of, make way for the Queen's Guard, or something similar if an absent-minded tourist gets in the way. And a video circulating on YouTube shows just what can happen when the guards are made fun of. On a visit to Windsor Castle in the UK, a young man is seen to be mimicking a stoic guard strut. He then leans in to put his hand on his shoulder, and within seconds, that same arm brings a rifle up to meet him in the eye. The Queen's Guards, or Household Brigade as they're officially titled, are all serving combat soldiers. Therefore, they are not to be messed with. Pictures can be taken of the guards, and some will let you get closer than others, but they aren't there for your entertainment, so it pays to be wary. Get too close or too boisterous, and they'll stamp their feet as a first warning that you're about to cross the line. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all. It'll take about five seconds to complete. Uh, let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Now it's time for the odd topic. We all know what it's like to have to work too hard. We've all had jobs that push us a little too far. But nobody knows work-based exhaustion quite like the Queen's guards. They have to work extraordinarily long hours and are often forced to work overtime on top of that. In this photo, you can see something we're quite sure the royal family don't want you to see. A member of the guard who collapsed out of sheer exhaustion. Considering all he had to do is stand there, it must have been an incredibly long shift before he caved in and finally buckled. Have you ever had a tough work day? Be sure to let us know. Comment down below with the hashtag odd topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Fainting to Attention did you know that the Queen's Guards have a specific resume to follow when it comes to fainting? Well, they do, and it turns out they faint quite a lot. It's not hard to believe either when you consider the uniform they wear isn't exactly suited to the warmer months. Imagine for a moment that it's the middle of the summer and you're dressed from head to foot in a woolen made ensemble with a heavy black fur hat to match. Naturally, you're not gonna take very long at all to overheat, but how do you cope? Realistically, not all of them do, hence the protocol. As soon as the guard starts to feel dizzy, they must remain at attention, keeping the same position when falling, even if it's face down. Ouch. They are trained to faint to attention, meaning they must keep their disciplined pose right throughout the fall and won't land in a crumpled heap like the rest of us would. Number 13. Relieving themselves on the spot. If you're the type that needs to go to the bathroom a little more regularly than most, working as a royal guard would be off limits. There are no bathroom breaks for these loyal servants of Her Majesty. In fact, they are under strict instructions to relieve themselves quietly whilst going about their royal duties. Imagine standing in front of thousands of onlookers and going to the toilet in your trousers without flickering an eye. I, for one, couldn't do it. Trained to remain unflinching in the face of everything from extreme weather conditions to people screaming abuse just inches from their face, the royal guards have it tough. 
Although their shifts are normally just two hours long, they're instructed to drink plenty of water before going on duty in the warmer months. If the need for a toilet stop does arise, however, Guardsman Sean Marsden says they are instructed to remain outwardly unflappable whilst relieving themselves in their thick woolen trousers. He points out that they are sufficiently dark enough to avoid any embarrassment. Still, imagine how uncomfortable it would be. And how long before they're allowed a changing break? Number 12. Guard stretching his lips. It sounds unbelievable, but it's true. If a royal guard is seen smiling whilst on duty and their superior officer notices, they may be fined up to a week's wages. The job of one of the queen's guards is obviously a very serious one, right down to the expression on your face. A bit tough if you're the cheerful type, but I guess if that was the case, you'd best not apply. For some, it wouldn't be an easy task, as often, the crowds gathered around will do almost anything to get the notoriously stern-faced guards to crack a smile. Unfortunately, they're oblivious to the fact that doing so could cost the poor guards a generous portion of their pay packet. If caught smiling or, worse still, laughing at a tourist's joke or silly antics, they can be charged anywhere from a few days to a week's pay or around 200 pounds. Sad, but true. Number 11. The Red Color Did you know that before heading out for duty, an inspection of each royal guard is carried out by Her Majesty the Queen herself? She is greeted by a royal salute and then carries out a thorough inspection of the troops. After the military bands have performed, the escorted regimental color, or flag, is processed down the ranks of soldiers, with over 100 words of command used by the officer in command of the parade to direct each soldier. Colors was the name given to the flags representing the different regiments in the British Army, with each one different to the next, depending on the colors and symbols of each regiment. The army used flags so that soldiers could easily keep an eye out for their own regiment's colors when they were on the battlefield, to ensure they didn't get lost in battle. It was therefore important that the colors were regularly displayed so that the soldiers could memorize them. Officers marched up and down in front of the troops, waving their flags, and this is what we now know as the Trooping of the Color. Number 10. The Queen's Nickname. Considered a rather common name, the Queen was given an alias many years back to ensure her safety prior to a royal visit. Formally, she is addressed as Your Majesty, Ma'am, and Elizabeth II. However, her very much informal name is apparently Sharon. This secret name, said to be given to her by security protection officers, is used when the Queen is out in public. Shortened to simply S on occasion, one royal aide wrote the initial down during a security trip in advance of her visit to a cathedral town. When asked what the S stood for, the aide was said to have whispered, it's Sharon. Royal historian Hugo Vickers believes that it is highly likely Her Majesty has been given the alias, as the name would be easily recalled and is inconspicuous. The Queen isn't the only famous figure protected by a secret name, with former US President Barack Obama's undercover moniker, Renegade. No doubt, Her Majesty is used to answering to several names, with Prince Philip said to refer to his wife as Lilibet or Sausage, and her great-grandchildren call her Gan Gan. How sweet. Number 9. Queen's Guards Wearing. In what could be considered either a cost-cutting measure or an attempt to play their part in preserving wildlife, the Queen's Guards recently trialed synthetic fur hats. The hats, which are tall and made from fluffy bear skin, were paired with their uniform to make the guards appear taller and more intimidating. The original fur hats cost $64,000 each. However, the artificial fur replacement didn't achieve the desired result. They didn't look as nice as the real fur hat, and the color ran out of them easily, with the only benefit being their lighter weight. Hats made from real bear skin can weigh from 2 to 4 kilograms, and if standing out in the rain or snow, it collects liquid making it even heavier. The bearskin hat is so heavy that if it's struck or shot in combat, it could easily break the soldier's neck, hence the undernose strap. Made from real bear fur, the hats are only replaced if they are too far gone to repair, and with one guard stating his is from 1968, this doesn't happen often. No doubt a relief for animal lovers. With an estimated population of 1 million, the Canadian black bear, the pelt of which the hats are fashioned, does not feature on the endangered species list. Number 8. Becoming a Queen's Guard. 
A half hour long computer based test must be undertaken and passed before you can even be considered as a prospective guard to the Queen. The BARB, or British Army Recruit Battery Test, checks your problem solving, analytical, and logical skills. On top of that, the test examines whether a recruit will be able to adapt to the role in the future. If you pass the test, you are still not guaranteed a position in this elite squad as you must measure at least 178 centimeters tall. Fully operational soldiers, the Queen's Guard and Queen's Lifeguard, are the names given to contingents of infantry and cavalry soldiers. These guards are charged with protecting the official royal residences in the UK. Number 7. Drunk on Duty if you think the Queen's Guards appear to be beyond reproach, you'd be wrong, with several found to be intoxicated on the job. Said to be a huge part of the culture among the Queen's Guards, a once trusted officer in the Metropolitan Police's Royalty Protection Command blew the whistle on a decade of naughtiness by those charged with protecting the royal family. Several of those who turned up smelling strongly of liquor were allowed to book out weapons, and others who were considered too far gone to adequately carry out their duties were advised to sleep at all or given medical relief in the form of mints or a Lucasade. All royal protection officers are armed to protect the queen from intruders. However, drunk and armed officers were a recipe for disaster, with one accidentally shooting his weapon twice on the queen's train. Tipsy officers have been known to threaten each other, and some prefer to carry their guns without bullets in case they accidentally shoot someone. In fact, in 2018, after a boozy brawl close to Windsor Castle, five soldiers from the Queen's Protection Team were arrested inside a kebab shop prior to heading back to their barracks. I wonder what the Queen had to say. Number 6. Nicknames for Protection Officers with an upsurge of royal protection officers of the younger generation taking over in the late 90s, a wide variety of outrageously inappropriate nicknames were soon circling at Buckingham Palace. The information was leaked through an internal Scotland Yard summary about the young guard's antics in the palace. The summary revealed that one officer was jokingly referred to as Roy the Rapist, while another was called Doug the Slug because he was overweight and lazy. With nicknames like this, you'd have to hope the guards had either a fantastic sense of humor or were exceptionally thick-skinned. Other examples include the poor chap mocked for his unhealthy interest in the royal family. He was named Fagin after the intruder who broke into Queen Elizabeth II's bedroom late one night in 1982. Fagin was a mild nickname, however, compared to that of Monkey Boy, a guard who was said to be built like a gorilla, and Dennis Nilsson, named after a notorious serial killer who was known for carrying a suitcase around. The guard did the same, and his fellow officers teased him about the similarities between him and the murderous Nilsson. Number 5. Intruder Given Whiskey by Queen Staff According to a charming chap who broke into Buckingham Palace late one night, Staff gave him a glass of whiskey as he looked a little parched. Considering the guy was an intruder, it's difficult to believe his rendition of the night's events, but it makes for an interesting tale anyway. Michael Fagan came face to face with the Queen in 1982, when he scaled a 14-foot wall at Buckingham Palace in bare feet. Minutes after finding himself in the bedroom of Her Majesty, who was said to be sleeping at the time, Fagan was grabbed by a footman who was standing guard outside her bedroom door. The footman, Paul Wybrew, is said to have offered him a stiff drink while waiting for the authorities to arrive. No doubt a tall tale considering Fagin's previous dodgy dealings, as this wasn't his first visit inside the palace walls. Just a month prior, he had managed to break into Prince Charles's quarters and spent most of the evening inside before being caught. Why he was allowed back out again to repeat the offense within a month of being caught, or how he wasn't noticed prior to entering the Queen's quarters, is a question for her security team. You can guarantee that one, if not several, were swiftly reassigned or cut loose following that incident. Number 4. Lady Friends Smuggled Into Palace it's hard to believe an ex-employee of the palace who was arrested for fraud, but Paul Page, who served in the Royal Protection Command from 1998 until 2004, dished the dirt on the royal family under oath, so it must be true. During his trial, he discussed in depth the private antics of Prince Andrew, who sometimes stayed at Buckingham Palace when his mum was away. What this had to do with the fraud case laid out against him, we'll never know, but considering the latest scandal that has rocked the palace, it certainly helps to put two and two together. In one legal 
document, Paige alleges Prince Andrew would often have lady friends come to visit him. In direct contravention of accepted palace protocols, these ladies often slipped in and out of the gates unnoticed, thanks to royalty officers who turned a blind eye in complete breach of their duties. Furthermore, the royal officers would on occasion drive the lady friends home. Paige's allegations do have a certain ring of truth to them, however, as tabloid stories around the time of the prince's separation from Sarah Ferguson in 1992 had labeled him Randy Andy and his lady friends Andy's Candy. The Duke of York is now under intense scrutiny following the sudden death of pedophile billionaire Jeffrey Epstein. His close relationship is now being examined, with footage obtained by the Mail on Sunday clearly showing Andrew waving to a woman inside the billionaire's New York mansion. Unsurprisingly, he is denying all allegations, saying under no circumstances did he ever sleep with underage women. I guess time will tell whether the Queen's second eldest son is telling the truth or not. Number 3. They Almost Shot the Queen Having armed guards watch over you night and day is considered one of the perks of the job when you're a member of the archaic hereditary UK monarchy. However, the Queen is said to have questioned the perk after one late night incident. Taking a stroll around the palace grounds in the dark of night, the Queen was mistaken for an intruder and came close to being shot. Said to suffer from the occasional bout of insomnia, Her Majesty will occasionally put on her coat and go for a short stroll to clear her head before bed. On the night in question, an ex-guardsman said he was patrolling the inside perimeter when he spotted a figure in the darkness that appeared to be sneaking into the royal residence. Fortunately, before jumping to conclusions, he asked the person to identify themselves. To his surprise, it was the Queen. On impulse, he is said to have exclaimed, Bloody hell, your majesty, I nearly shot you. Perhaps realizing the predicament she had put him in, the queen put him at ease, admitting it was her fault and she would ring through next time to avoid being shot. Wise idea, your majesty, wise idea. Number two, the guns aren't loaded. Usually. With their job to protect the Queen, the Royal Guards do need some sort of protection for both Her Majesty and themselves. As such, they carry the standard issue rifle intended for British Royal duties, the L85A2 assault rifle. Although the weapon is rarely used, it is loaded in case of a threat. If the need arises, the possible threat is told to stand back. If they don't cooperate, they are warned again and, following that, the guard is entitled to raise their rifle and point it at the subject. If the threat is found to be unarmed and doesn't pose any danger, the guard has the power to arrest the suspect and call for backup. Contrary to this information, however, a working guardsman told Reddit that most of the time, the guns they carry aren't loaded. In fact, whether they're loaded or not is dependent on the level of threat expected on the day. Loaded or not, it probably wouldn't pay to find out. Number 1. Napping on Duty a special system was devised by royal guards who were burdened with the dreaded night shift at Buckingham Palace. A system Her Majesty would be none too pleased to find out existed, the ring-around system, prevented officers from being caught by their supervisors snoozing on night duty. With two guards posted outside to protect the garden area outside the Queen's bedroom, sleeping wouldn't have been the easiest, given the weather conditions. If they did not off, it was always after checks by the governor had been completed. Former guard Paul Page, who appears to be the palace snitch, said it was natural for the night guards to go to sleep whilst on duty. He said if a senior officer was noticed coming into the garden, he would contact the control room to ring the other posts. The governor would do his checks, have a little chat, and the guards would go back to sleep. A fact Her Majesty would be none too pleased to hear, I'm sure. Now that you're privy to secret information about the Queen's guards, next time they grace your television screen or you're lucky enough to see them in person, my bet is you'll be watching them intently. Watch for their reactions. See if any crack a smile or utter a word. I bet they don't. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.